While today's subject might not be as well known as our previously covered Merry Christmas Mr. Lawrence, or the ever controversial In the Realm of the Senses, Death by Hanging is perhaps one of the most notable films Oshima produced in the 1960s. Like most of his film work, Death by Hanging tells a tale of political dissent, racism, and capital punishment. Yeah, you might have been able to tell based off our previous episodes on Oshima, but Nagisa Oshima had some things to say and he was not afraid to say them. Death by Hanging is a rather on-the-nose film, which you might have deduced from its title. It deals with a Korean man who has been found guilty of murder, and is set to be hanged by a council of Japanese officials. The film calls attention to his ethnicity, as its subtext deals largely with Japan's treatment of Korea in the 20th century. Between 1910 and 1945, Japan occupied the Korean Peninsula, subjugating its citizenry and creating generational friction between those adherent to the Japanese Empire and its ideals, and those of Korean descent. During a brief hiatus from feature films, Oshima made television documentaries in the mid-1960s. At this point, he traveled to Korea and Vietnam for the first time. While in Korea, Oshima collected the photographs and footage that would become one of these documentaries and an independent feature film which saw his return to filmmaking in Japan. Through the strife that he witnessed within the nation, Oshima grew sympathetic to the difficulties he saw in being a citizen of 20th century Korea, having suffered through imperialism in the teens through the 90s and a splitting of the country due to communism in the 1950s. While these earlier films dealt with the fallout of these events and periods on the Korean side, Death by Hanging deals with the issue of Japanese-Korean relationship within Japan. There's been a bit of debate in more recent years as to whether the treaty which allowed Japan to assume control of Korea was even legal in the first place. But the fact remains that Japan assumed de facto control over the nation for more than three decades. So, after South Korea became a separate state once more, tensions remained understandably high on both sides for a time. With Korea banning the import of Japanese media for the majority of modern history, and the Japanese having a tendency to stereotype the Koreans as an inferior race. You know, the same way most imperial nations deal with the people they colonize. This isn't to say by any means that all Japanese citizens do or did feel that Korea was a lesser nation, and that those of Korean ethnicity were lesser. I mean, we're talking about a film today directed by a Japanese man, which is critical of those views. We simply mean that the sentiment and belief of these stereotypes was common enough that it prompted a reaction by someone like Oshima. Also of note for cultural relevance going into the film is that hanging is the only method used for capital punishment in Japan, unlike other nations where lethal injection and the electric chair are employed. Due to Japan's notoriously lengthy trial and appeals process, it was not unheard of at the time of Death by Hanging's release for someone to be on death row for four years before their execution, despite having a definite death sentence, as is the case within the film. More recently, we could look to Shoko Asahara, the leader of Aum Shin Rikyo, who was arrested for his part in the Tokyo subway attacks in 1995, but wasn't sentenced to death until 2004. As of this writing, this sentence has not been carried out due to appeals from Asahara's lawyers and due to the ongoing trials of other Aum members. Another recent example is the execution of Teruhiku Seiki in December 2017, who was convicted of killing four people as a minor, but who was not executed until he was 44 years old. Based off of these examples and the many more we could cite, we can glean that the situation in Death by Hanging is a realistic one. In fact, the opening of the film deals largely in Oshima's documentary style, providing the audience with the sense that what they are viewing is real. We are led through the prison compound containing the execution chamber, where our Korean victim, named R, is set to be killed. The chamber is a small building, offset from the rest of the prison, which is furnished to look like a simple house. In narration, we are told that R is given his last rites, his last meal, and his last cigarette, before being blindfolded, holding the proper execution chamber from their view. R is then hanged before a gallery, including one man whose job it is to simply witness the execution. The doctor then checks R's pulse, which the narrator explains can sometimes continue for 15 minutes. A problem occurs, however, and we break from this documentary style. Despite being hanged, R's heart won't stop beating. He won't die. <laughs> 
This is the main conceit of the film, the absurd question of what the guard should do with a condemned person who simply refuses to die. In raising this rhetorical scenario, Oshima and his co-authors are able to explore a number of further questions relating to race, capital punishment, crime, and morality. We'll be getting into these in a bit. For the time being, however, we would encourage everyone who has not seen the film to go view it. In America, it is available on DVD through Criterion, while the UK has yet to receive an official release of the film. After the initial 5 or 10 minutes, which we just described, Death by Hanging very quickly goes off the rails. And it's the type of thing you might not want spoiled for you. The film is based on a script that Oshima wrote around 1963. The script was then rewritten by Oshima, Tsutomu Tamura, Mamoru Sasaki, and Michinori Fukao. It was filmed in the latter part of the 1960s, after Oshima's hiatus from feature films, and released on February 3, 1968 in Japan. The following year, all four writers in the project won the magazine Kinema Junpo's 1969 award for best screenplay. We bring this up to try and raise the point that this film is a notable one for a number of reasons, not least of which is the caliber of writing on display. With that in mind, let's get into what is so inventive about Death by Hanging after the initial tonal shift. The officials present at the hanging take the man down and debate whether they should try to hang him again. This presents a multitude of perspectives and reasons for their ideas. Because R was a Catholic rather than a Buddhist, the chaplain present argues that he has been put to death and that he has no soul now. In turn, he states that it is an act against God to hang a soulless shell. Another official declares that the man must be demented if he has simply refused to die. The young intern, who has actually read the manual on prison procedure and law, explains that you cannot legally execute someone of unsound mind, or someone who is unconscious. Despite all of these conflicting moralities and ideas, the officials end up going with the letter of the law. At this point, the film enters its absurdist comedy mode where all of the officials have their feathers ruffled by the fact that they cannot get this living corpse to cooperate. Through trial and error, the officers eventually resuscitate R. However, he displays no recollection of his crimes, nor even his identity. The remainder of the film deals with the men attempting to remind R of his self and his past, through play-acting scenes of his upbringing and his crimes. As might be expected in this type of absurdist dark comedy, the scenarios continually escalate until we arrive at the point where the officers are taking R out of the confines of the execution chamber, encouraging him to actually assault people, and partaking in group hallucinations with the condemned. Death by Hanging is, at its heart, an examination of capital punishment and race relations within Japan during the post-war period. What's more, however, it's an exploration of how popular media portrays criminals, and how these portrayals interact with how people perceive and interface with said criminals. Believe it or not, R is based on a real person. Ri Chinu, and I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong was a Japanese-born Korean man who murdered two schoolgirls in 1958, then proceeded to confess to the crimes and produce a series of writings from prison explaining his actions and ruminating on their implications. In particular, he had lengthy discussions with Bok Junan, a South Korean journalist and communist sympathizer, represented here by the character of R's sister, seen later in the film. Some of the dialogue in their scenes is actually taken from the talks held by Ri and Bok. This sense of reality being skewed to fit the narrative of a film speaks to how Oshima perhaps saw his role as a political activist and an artist. It also shows how Oshima utilized the skills he had acquired in working with documentary to both heighten and challenge the film's sense of realism, and to call attention to the fictional nature of Death by Hanging. Speaking on Ri Chinu, Oshima stated in his book of collected writings, Cinema, Censorship, and the State, that Ri was the, quote, most intelligent and sensitive youth produced by post-war Japan, end quote. This view explains a bit of the focus on R throughout the film, and perhaps the interest in depicting him as an innocent, pure, childlike being who simply doesn't understand right and wrong as they are defined by society. By learning that R is effectively a real person, it provides Death by Hanging another layer of depth, 
in which we as an audience recognize that we can sympathize with a murderer as much as we can state officials, but then realize that we are effectively sympathizing with an actual murderer, albeit via a fictional portrayal. It's like if you took the narrative of V for Vendetta, which provides us with a character who can either be viewed as a terrorist or a vigilante, depending on our beliefs in politics and rightful power distribution, and then it's revealed that, oh, V's motivations, beliefs, and even some of his dialogue were lifted from a real-world person that the country in which you lived sees officially as a no-gray-area terrorist. What do you do then, knowing that there is this level of ambiguity? This, we believe, might be the point even more so than drawing attention to the issues of the era in terms of race relations and what Oshima clearly saw as the moral wrongness of state executions. Death by hanging is meant to call attention to our roles as passive observers of R's death. It shows us the act before introducing us to R properly. We can view the act without much emotion the first time, while the second time is more ambiguous, as we have gained all the emotional and intellectual baggage that comes with the journey of the film's narrative. Death by Hanging has been noted as being influenced by both French New Wave director Jean-Luc Godard and Bertolt Brecht, a German playwright working in the early 20th century who is remembered for creating what is called a distancing effect in his work. Brecht tried to create a method, through his plays, of emotionally disengaging the audience, so that they might be more objective in their understanding of events, and the contradictions that occur therein. He did this by, instead of trying to engage and manipulate the audience, drawing attention to the fact that they were observing performers, rather than true events. In theory, this would lead to the audience becoming aware of their act of viewing, and in turn give them new perspective on the proceedings. Using Brechtian methods, Oshima imbues the film with elements that help the viewer distance themselves emotionally from the narrative, while noting the hypocrisy of what the actors are doing and saying. We as the audience are thus allowed to find the tragic comedy within the work. Elements like the inclusion of intertitles explaining what is about to happen so that the audience is not surprised, a narration introducing the hypocrisy of the seeming normalcy in a system of killing criminals forcing actors to act as actors acting out their version of the truth of the character that they assume to represent are. All of these forced emotional withdrawals make the film at once absurd, tragic, and hilarious. Yasuhiro Yoshioka, who provides cinematography for the film, and who did most of his film work with Oshima, lends to this feeling. In Death by Hanging, most shots take an exorbitant amount of time, and there is very little quick cutting or action. This gives the film the air of a stage play more so than a cinematic movie, and presents the audience with more opportunity for distancing. All the while, we become so wrapped up in the spectacle, the escalating tensions, and the insanity of the film that we forget the initial framework before even the execution. We are bearing witness just as all characters in the viewing gallery are. We are simply observing, unable to intervene in R's execution, or anything else that might happen between his last rites and his actual time of death. It is up to us, then, to decide how these events will affect our lives once we leave the viewing gallery. What do we take with us? This question is asked at the film's ending, as we are reminded of our spectatorial position with a callous thanks in keeping with the thanks given to all of the officials within the film who bore witness with us. In terms of message, Death by Hanging is, of course, a film concerned with capital punishment, and questioning the ethics thereof, particularly in a context where prejudice can enter into the equation. R is constantly looked down upon and insulted for his Korean heritage, instilling in the viewer the idea that the officers at his execution are less concerned with justice, and more so with airing grievances in private against what they consider to be a lesser race. The film examines the impact of these prejudices, while going one step further to question the prejudices themselves. Things get complicated when the revived R proves not to understand what he is guilty of, let alone the concept of guilt. He does not even understand what being Korean, or Japanese for that matter, means. How can someone be made to feel bad for being something that they don't understand? If an alien were to visit and insult humanity for being a lower race, humans would be offended, because our understanding of ourselves is so closely linked to our humanity. But if the alien used words that we could not understand to insult us, it would fall upon us to interpret whether these unrecognizable sounds were insults or compliments. 
It's because R is a clean state, devoid of understanding for the inherent negative qualities understood of being a Korean in the face of nationalistic Japanese officials, that he is useful as a means of expressing how inherently absurd prejudice is. Ultimately, it could be said that he might understand all of the people in the room to be human, as a child would, but that society as represented by the officials, rather than nature, instills in him the idea of race, thus opening the door for racism. It's this setup that provides for social commentary along with comedy, as we, the audience, understand what he has been found guilty of and why he's disliked, no matter how illogical or racist the reasoning might be. We laugh at the idea of a grown man acting so infantile as to not understand basic principles like nationality and carnal desire. But it's through this comedic veil that Death by Hanging is able to ask some of its deeper questions, where the critique of capital punishment becomes more of a framework than the central point of the picture. Why are soldiers allowed to kill and, just as with executions, their actions become sources of political power, while an individual without state sanctioning to kill remains a murderer? Why do we grant powers like this in concepts known as nations? And why do we allow them to decide for us what is right and what is wrong? What is an ethnicity if not a means of others understanding our origins and character in a single word? Without a concept of race, would racism still exist in the form we can observe in the real world as well as the world of the film? Death by Hanging is so loaded with symbolism and meaning that, while we could argue for a time about its true intent, it's at the very least difficult to argue that Death by Hanging has nothing to say. It's a poignant film that acts as a time capsule that is timeless due to its fundamental questions and themes. It makes one uncomfortable, but also giddy with laughter. It breaks film convention, yet remains a superb film. Death by Hanging is certainly an experiment from a master of the Japanese new wave, and we would say that this experiment is an unmitigated success.